be here with uh, Professor Subhashish Chaudhary. I think we have witnessed an amazing day today. Uh, you know, one sir, it is great to be honored by your own people. Uh, when when uh, your own people come together and, and applaud you for your achievements, I think that there's nothing greater than that. Second, second that we witnessed was uh, the teacher, the proud teacher, Professor B. N. Chatterjee, the proud teacher. How I can just imagine, you know, how proud he would have been giving away the award. And and the student receiving it from the teacher. And I know goosebumps. Uh, amazing, amazing. And uh, we have all read you know, some of your papers thought of, even if you really don't understand. Uh, you know, Professor Chatterjee's work we are all familiar with. Image processing has been one of the earliest uh, topics uh, in computer science, one of the biggest problems people started with in computer science. And when I, you came in, sir, I was, I was pretty pleasantly surprised. <laughs> I, I just thought I would be speaking to Professor Chaudhary here. Now I will be speaking to two, two great men. Uh, and of course, there are Yumiri is here, Dr. Ramani is here, uh, Professor Sadagopan is here, and Professor Kincha is here. It's an honor. Let us start. Now, this is more about knowing you. Uh, this, is not, this is not going to be a technical conversation. You will wait. That, that is easier. That is easier. <laughs> <laughs> we, we will wait into a little bit of it as much as I can handle. Um, but mostly it will be about understanding you, knowing you. Because there is a wider audience uh, which will be watching this on the net. So we will start with the softer subjects. Uh, we would like to know what are your hobbies and interests. Okay. So first of all, is a key that I tried to dabble into tabla, and uh, I thought this would be a good thing to do as a kid. Within first two lessons, then I realized it's not for me because I started painting my finger, all these things. So I, I'm out of music. Okay. But. What I found interesting is actually reading, okay? And I, I think at the earlier years, I was like really voracious reader, okay? Used to be particularly literature, Bengali literature was like, I think almost you know, majority of them. But, uh, you know, I these those days now, it is it has changed. When we were kids, I mean, particularly, you know, studying Karakpur, we used to get two and a half months as a, you know, pure holidays. I think, you know, there was no question of literacy, there was no question of anything, there was no mobile, no TV, okay, you know, you very less. So, it was like a complete time to go to the library, you know, I was in a small village, okay, used to go to the library, okay, there, and collect all the books and reads, okay. Of course, with time, the type of books you read that change, the, I think the book has changed. I think over, I think uh, the thing which is more fulfilling in terms of reading, I think that's what I would say that the chunk of my time goes into the other type of reading. I think Rao is more on Vedantic philosophy and others, but yes, so I would say that. What would you read then? Read them means? What, what kind of, what, what would you read then? What, what, what would be your favorite suggestion? It depends, you know, like when you are in college going kids, then something, then you gradually migrate into something, you know, then I think uh, right now, as I said, is whatever is I'm reading is more like uh, Advaita Vada and others getting, you know, like what is the philosophical underpinning, uh, what it means. It, it's also uh, quite fulfilling in that sense because you get a perspective, different perspective to life, you know, the, the society, the development. I think that's, that's what we wanted to learn at the time. Why I asked you this question was there used to be uh, this thing around in colleges that you should be reading Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. You know, the power of physics to, to be there. Right? Did you pick up any of those books? No, actually, see, if you, I, I don't think we should be always looking at, you know, 
what helps me today. I think if you do that, uh, I think that your focus is very narrow in that sense, and you are, you know, my opinion, I think the right word would be. But if you leave something and do something, you know, leave something that uh, an after test, like you know, in the coffee. Okay, the French way, the way of having it is that they want to kill the after test by immediately after coffee, black coffee, they give you a chocolate. I think I get that. Okay, so when you do something, when you have something, there will be something for future. Okay, and whenever even my reading and all, at the end of when I close this. I think I would always look into that is that, was it worth reading the book? Or it was like, a, you know, this is something also I ought, you know, many times we do. It's, of course, nowadays, I don't get too much of time, I must say that. But this is something that, what is the kind of thing? Okay, it's a nice novel that has something different, but if it is something different, okay. What is the learning thing? I think that's what says that I don't have to use it now. Maybe. Five years you never know when it's useful, right? And I, I think that's that's the spirit I always try to follow. Interesting that you are talking about it. Uh, very early in your age, probably you were already getting ready for machine learning. That I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because the announcements were not there. On the latest side, if you were saying that you know, what is the learning, so you are already you know trying to pick up the right data out there. You know, you know, just on the latest side there. Uh, how? You know, you are an administrator uh, and a researcher. Very few tough jobs, and administrating an institution of the you know stature of IIT Bombay is not a job. Uh, how do you manage this, and how do you more more than that, how do you relax? I think uh, you know at the beginning, if you have noticed, uh, Mr. King just said certain comments. I think they are very relevant. Okay, that see I. The question is that you know many times it's true that if you keep focused in one thing, sometimes uh, you can do a lot more things. But uh, human capability also you have to look into that. Okay. So, for example, uh, you know some people ask me like you know when I was deputy director of thing, I was in a meeting till like you know almost five o'clock, and then I have a lecture for next one and a half hour. Okay. Uh, next, so how do I? move from there to the next room over there and start talking about it. So you have to switch up the previous, you know, that, that switching off is important. And then when you are looking into that as a teaching, I should be fully into the teaching part of it. Okay. Then you will do that. At the same time when I am there I should not be thinking of what I should teach there. Okay. So the planning, whenever your time you do it, maybe the night before that, before going to bed, you think about what would be the plan for teaching. Because uh, I must also tell you that when I started teaching, okay, as most of us, you, know, you start, you always, uh, you know, start with a note. Okay. Nowadays, it become easier because many people use PPT and others, right? So that's you. You have this, and I did it for few years, okay, initially. Then I realized this is not how I should teach. Okay. The reason is that, of course, when you have set up notes, others, it gives you a kind of uh, direction. I know that what is the flow. But there is also something from the student side, right? So, for example, so I made a point very soon that I should not use any class notes or anything or even PPT. Okay. I should just go and do board work, okay? And if you do the board work, don't use it. Okay, occasionally you may, so what is the next type of, it may happen. But I think this, since we are in IIT, we are, you know, quite privileged, a lot of excellent students, okay? So they themselves will say, oh, so this would be the next step or you made a mistake here. Okay, that's not, no problem. But I think then what happens is that you are involved into the proper way of teaching. Okay, I think that's what I always followed. I think till then after that I said, okay, done with my note, I'll not even save it anywhere. Okay, because when I was giving up and that one course that I was saying, the next person said, can you give me your class notes? I said, sorry, I don't have anything. Okay, so it's all gone. Okay, so I think that's what I try to follow. 
Sir, but that's a very interesting practice because uh, these days in many of the you know institutions you are supposed to submit your notes beforehand. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> I think that's because of the pandemic is more. But I think in US and others they demand that you know that you have to give them this one. Uh, but I think you know, frankly speaking, being in some of these uh, privileged places, I think uh, you know if we do it purely on that. Even I've done the other way also. See, sometimes what I've done, uh, like you can do it in a, um, you know, on the tablet. And at the end of it, you can upload. But at the time, you don't use it. You just do it on the, on the tablet, on the fly. See, I can understand as a, as a researcher, you can come up with, if I ask you what are your challenges, you can come up with a million of, million of them. But as an administrator, what is your biggest challenge? I think... Uh, See, the administrator, again, uh, you know, typically it's, it should be one of the, you know, remember that at the end of it, I am also a faculty member, okay? So if I exclude myself that I am only the director, okay, and not a, no longer a faculty member, then that would be the first wrong step that I would take, okay? So, each faculty member brings with a lot of their own, uh, you know, kind of, uh, you know, their expertise, research. And also, uh, typically the way it happens, a professor normally is like an emperor, okay? So they have their own five term, you know, this is, so handling them should not be like an order or anything, right? That, hap that doesn't work, okay? It's like, I've seen some places they do that, particularly even many you, you know countries outside. But it should be more like getting it through the consensus, get them onto the process, and at the same time you have to follow the same set of rules, right? So if you don't, then there's a problem. Okay. So till the deputy director, I used to always say that I will always do a co you know like a lecture. I'll never miss a lecture. Okay. Number two. If I am also a researcher, because that's what we demand that you have to do, then I should also have some time for me to do the research, because that's basically a refreshing thing for any of us as a teacher, right? So one of the things I decided that, uh, you know, to see that you have to be one of the faculty members like that, and they should say, okay, yes, the director is also working on this. Of course, now I get much less time than in my earlier time. But the key thing is, like, I should, you know, probably still publish, you know, which is a little difficult. I have now some collaborators like Biplav and others, they are helping me. But one thing I do is that, can I have during tenure of each of my, uh, let's say, you know, like a head, then you have well, like a dean, deputy director, and now the director at least one monograph to show that, you know, which takes a lot more time. So can I have at least one monograph published during the tenure of that particular, you know, program? So, so far I have done it and the director, as a director, I have not been able to do it. But I think we should be able to uh, send the thing to Springer in another five, six months. Okay, so then I think. That's amazing. So, should be able to do that. Uh, you know, what you are saying is, you know, you are leading by example. And, and, <laughs> and, you know, one of the biggest challenges as an administrator, as you rightly said, is managing people. And, and, and I found while researching about you that you are a prolific writer. Uh, you have published papers and published books. Uh, we'll come to that, you know, we'll shortly come to that. I would like to, you know, uh, shift gears here, you know, move a little bit back to your childhood, you know, not, you know, school days, high school days, perhaps. What is your earliest memory? of uh, interaction with science and technology in a serious way that would hold your interest for the rest of your life? I think the interest is before, uh, see I come from a probably, you know, I would say one of the poorest districts, okay, uh, in India, is Murshidabad district, okay, and almost even now probably there is not, not much thing except probably that that time the key industry there is Bidi. You know, and most of the people were actually uh, those who do the bidding. But the great thing was my father, okay? So he was like uh, the, what you call the headmaster of the school that I always went through. 
and he was also helping in terms of you know those days particularly that being the place uh, there was no place for education for girls so he used to basically go to what i am doing now as a director you know begging money for uh, you know alumni and others to set up this he used to do it in his time to talk to the so called the rich people over there okay give give the land or give some money to set up some school for girls and others so uh, the key thing was that you know you would say that do whatever you like okay and then uh, particularly science and others he, he was not a person of you know man from science so he was more of the humanities side okay and what i found was that that uh, you know the anybody used to come okay my you know he was a very good i was a matter of fact as a school builder and all so many people used to come for help and my father sometimes you know he said okay you know the person has come i have to do my grocery today so he says before you go you ask him questions okay and invariably the question happened whoever is the visitor okay was in some math because that is the easy thing to okay if the monkey goes to you know that problem or something whatever ask him some question so i it, it gave me a little bit of advantage because almost any visitor to our house with, has not gone to our outside without ask posing a question to me okay and uh, that actually gave me a lot of confidence particularly in mathematics because it happened in the math, math mostly right because that is easy to do, do okay i mean nobody ask okay when was the first panipat battle or something that's very rare okay it was be more like solving this math and uh, then i started enjoying it so then what happened was that of course uh, you move this place was only problem was that the education was not the fo focus of that area okay so my father said okay you had up to 10th standard move to a place and then what happened was that i was put into you know narendrapur ramkrishna mission i think uh, you talked about ramkrishna mission yes. you know so i was there in narendrapur then suddenly you know here is a topper from a school you know school suddenly you drop it into the this place and i found i was nowhere my training whatever i did i was doing very very poorly then we you know like i think initially struggled that okay because these are all kids from various other places okay and that helped okay so it took me like 2 years and that gave me i think enough confidence that when i went to kharagpur then okay uh then i think it just like you know because these friends were there many of them then you build up a, like a kind of a help self help group and that that put me in a good state excellent uh, you know you went to iit kharagpur uh, just before i jump into this question uh, did you think about getting into iit or was it an you know well uh, to be honest my father did not want me to be an engineer okay that's for sure he uh, wanted to me to be a doctor okay as a matter of fact he wanted everybody to be doctor in the family as a matter of fact. okay and i remember that i promised to him was that okay i in a 11 12 standard that i should do biology i should keep the biology okay so which i did <laughs> then what happened was that in our particular year somehow some question paper got leaked in the high secondary exam and then our board exam or the local west bengal joint entrance got little delayed okay so i think the we finished our practical exam plus 12 next day we are in kharagpur joining there right i think all all of them okay aloknath was there in my room met there and uh, what happened was that after that after a month or two okay i think that was when all the medical board ex results were out okay and my father did not like that okay i am in uh, engineering okay so he said you have to move to medical okay so what i did was that you know that there was those physical counseling so i did not go okay because i like this thought i thought you know this is the right kind of thing. so my father then when he did not i did not go there because it was in kharagpur i was in kharagpur and that was happening in calcutta so he met the i think you know nowadays it's unthinkable because that you know nobody has that kind of permission anymore so he talked to the uh, you know whoever was admission coordinator for the medical area said that can you give me like a 
one week time to convince my son that I can bring him back so that uh, you know he he comes back to med school okay and uh, my rank was very high there for some you know thing for some reason so he said okay normally we would not do it because you you was like in the top so okay I'll give you seven days okay then those seven days uh, so it you know I then I said sorry you know, I'm not going okay but then my mother came you know said okay if he wants to do it okay why not why insist okay so he agreed but I tell you the reason why he was insist you know I mean you have to look at from his perspective okay he was when he was seven years old I mean seven or eight years as a boy okay uh, he actually lost part of the eye okay because of some fishing he was doing fishing or something okay and as a matter of fact he was the first cornea grafting person probably in India okay somebody as a kid nobody in the village knew it so he just landed up in Calcutta he was crying in uh, medical college corridor somewhere okay one of the doctors says okay boy is crying he says you know he's like very young maybe I had hardly 10 12 year old he says why are you doing he says like you know I have problem with this thing he says he looked at it okay and he says go back okay and the reason he was sent to Calcutta was this was like last visit where he could see something after that you know probably he will turn blind or something so he went there and this doctor says give me your address if I call you you should land up there immediately okay so he came back and immediately he got a letter that somebody's cornea was to be you know there so he went back and he got this thing done okay this is I'm talking about I don't know it must be like before 50 1950 so because of that he had an absolute fascination for doctors he says they can change your life because he himself is a beneficiary of that so he wanted that in me okay and that's I think that his justification so if you look at it he was not really pushing for no reason at all I mean there was a reason for him to do that no definitely but I think many of many here including me are thanking God that you you know took up engineering but maybe somebody else would have thanked <laughs> <Yeah>. there <laughs> <laughs> on the lighter side, uh, Professor. So you went to IIT Kharagpur in 1985 to do your bachelor's. Uh, the field was pretty young then, you know, probably from 1965 to 1985, it went a little slow, right? But there were amazing research work being done, you know, some of, some of them are right here, uh, who pioneered that research. But how did you land up in Professor B. N. Chatterjee's uh, class? Okay, so, you know, when you are in the hostels and all you time time you discuss okay I think uh, then you look at in the final year we are the five years back that time okay it was a little slow pace than now the four years of the, and uh, we were thinking what to do okay and uh, Professor Chatterjee he taught us a course on control theory I think before that and I think there was another course on industrial something heating or something I forget industrial electronics something like I think he taught us two courses okay now what we found was that probably he was the most gentleman person that we actually seen as a teacher okay he was extremely fatherly person okay and whatever we had problem okay that uh, you know we told him he says don't worry it will be all fine we'll see everything and his personality was very very you know different okay so even now is the same no I was not there for this Mike I forgot to tell that this batch of students are those so friendly that they used to come to my house quite frequently sometimes they used to tell my wife that you prepare food for eight of us uh, we'll come in the evening and we'll eat it I don't know whether Suhasis was there or not uh, may maybe not but some of them were there and uh, they used to finish everything and at the end they said only this much we wanted much more than this. <laughs> 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 so, 
So uh, they, they were very friendly, not only with me, with my family also. Okay. See, also what happened was that it's not also one is a personality and the second thing was the area that time was coming up. Okay. Uh, we did something in the, those days you had to physically go to the library. We looked at, it looks like it's an interesting area that you can think of. Of course, we did not know much before you jump into that. So then we started, but I, I think I must tell you also, unfortunately we picked up a very difficult problem. Okay. Uh, on, and uh, we realized myself and all of that, we are not really you are, you know, able to make out what it is. I think today if you say that, you know, we are too young that time, it was a statistical, uh, I think, texture analysis, I think, you know, in some sense, uh, uh, stochastic modeling and all. So, we did not have a proper training that time. So, we used to go and say, sir, we are not understanding anything, okay. Then he used to tell us, okay, try to do it. If you don't, if you can't do it, don't worry. So, I, I, in a hindsight, I would say that probably, we did not do a good job, could not do rather, I would say, any good job in the uh, thesis at all compared to what current set of students do, okay. Because it, uh, but that way what happened is that once you face a tough problem, then you realize that there are a nice interesting problem, you should be able to take it up. Very true. Very well said, Professor. Um, you went to University of Calgary for your master's in electrical uh, engineering and then University of San Diego where you earned University your of California at San Diego. Uh, oh, sorry, San University Diego of California at San Diego where you earned your PhD. Uh, your area of interest were pattern recognition, image processing and con computer vision. One leads to the other. Um, what made you pick up this area? Was it, was it your training in Kharagpur uh, or, or you had uh, you had I, I think, uh, you know, since we started working, you know, we could see that there are a lot of interesting things happening. But I must also tell you, this is just before the medical imaging coming up very strongly, okay. So, we realized that uh, at some point that it's an upcoming area, okay. There are uh, certain nice uh, things that you can do. but not possibly in the form of, we did not even there. I mean, if you look at it, this area developed, I think in India also, we had Professor Narsiman and all that started, they were probably the first group of people they have done. Professor Dijas Datta Majumdar was there, okay. They were like all real, um, you know, great people, you know, very senior people. And then, of course, then uh, ISI, TIFR there, and then Kharagpur used to have, as, okay. As a matter of fact, at one time it turned out that there so many students came from Kharagpur, particularly for that. Chatterjee's lab and others. Then major is the major, the national language of computer, you know, image processing is like in Bengali. And that also happened because most of them uh, turned out those days were Bengalis. But thankfully now it has spread out everywhere. Now, uh, Professor Dikshitalu is another person, okay, from ISC. So these are, you know, a lot of great people who work in that area. And uh, what we uh, then moved there, Okay, then we realized at the master's level that there is a, I did something on biomedical and others, that medical imaging is one which is coming up and that's where it got revitalized because before that, see, it was more like something can be done, but what is the application was not really there, okay, but I think the ones you see, you know, the city was coming up around 1970s and others, you know, slowly into this, okay. Uh, that made a huge change. And then, of course, you know, when we started, there was we could not display our pictures. There was nothing there. And today is all pervading, right? So these were the problems that we had, okay? So now, uh, and that's why it has come back because of this computing, display, all this thing together. And the main buyers are actually the, all the medical, uh, I think, the imaging kind of thing. So it's, it's really revol revolutionized the area. That's very true. You know, I was doing some research and one of the things that interested me was uh, super resolutions, motion, especially your book on motion free super resolutions and uh, this is what you have to say in the opening paragraph. Uh, super re resolution from a single observed image is a highly ill posed problem since there may exist infinitely many expanded images which are consistent with the original data, I unquote. A thought flashed in me where a crowd is taking pictures of a scene with their mobile phones with randomly different optical resolutions. 
can they be used to recreate the scene with very high resolution and depth? No. Is, is that a possibility is being applied now? Yeah, so if you uh, look at it, actually we had a paper long time ago where we said that super resolution from zooming, this is we're saying optical resolution, so you, you try to keep zooming. So you see certain part of the scene at certain resolution, whereas the next part of the thing at a little higher resolution, next are like this. So if you go into that, then what happens is that then if you can create a model based on what is the highest resolution and assume this is like, a, you know, more or less the entire image satisfies that kind of condition, then based on that you can improve the quality on that. So we had something and nowadays if you look at uh, many of these mobile and other cameras, okay, they use multiple, uh, you know, cameras. So the back, some of them three, four, I don't know, maybe next generation even more cameras. So all of them try to do it different things, okay. So people try to uh, get it at different resolution, okay. There is different bit depth you can do, okay. So it's not like, you know, if, so this is another thing called uh, dynamic range. So if instead of the spatial, if you say instead of 8 bit, 12 bit higher, you know, so then it's a dynamic range. Uh, like taking picture in light and shade, it's difficult. So that can be done if you do it at different, uh, you know, way you take it with different apertures and others. So these are all possible things that uh, one can do, okay. And people try to do it also. If you look at many of them, you know, now most of the mobile, they have HDR, okay, so mode. So uh, that is high dynamic range mode. And that is precisely, you know, we did it quite uh, some time ago, that how to do it on the high dynamic range. See, something uh, uh, that is interesting again is uh, the areas of computer vision. You also have interest in computational haptics um, and image processing. You know, they are all sort of coming together in what is now being touted as metaverse. Okay. okay. Now, this is the probably the second avatar of second life, you know early 90s we used to have a platform called Second Life. We all tried to play with it, but our bandwidth wouldn't allow in India. Right. Now this seems to be making a coming back. Uh, just your thoughts on this. Okay, so maybe b before we go into that, I will tell you the example that uh, we did during this pandemic. Okay. One of the most cherished items for uh, today, you know, it happened, I never attended any of my own convocation. Okay. I know but uh, nowadays, all of them, they want to do it, okay. And it turned out that when you have this pandemic, no physical thing. So you want uh, them to get the thing. The, all students said, no, we'll wait till the pandemic is over, okay. And then we come for this. And my philosophy there as a director says that calendar must be maintained because if you, you don't know, there's an uncertainty. Okay, you don't know what it is because earlier also said we'll have no online course. We'll wait till the pandemic is over and then we'll bring them back. Then we'd have waited for two years, right? There's no so one. Then I told them, okay, since I belong to this area, let me work out something. Okay, which is something very uh, different. Okay, so this is before all this term came up, metaverse and all. We'll do this uh, 3D proper avatar based, okay, but you know, you know complete your uh, virtual reality enabled, your convocation. So what we did is that for uh, each student, we said, okay, give us few pictures of certain nice pictures, okay, and your height, other things, then we created an avatar for each person. They created an avatar for me, okay, they created an avatar for the chief guest, okay, and we had the background. Then what we did with that, we created a complete package for all students, okay, to get that particular kind of degree, where th the student's avatar got the degree from my avatar or the medal from the chief guest's avatar, okay. And uh, it's interesting, the two things I can tell on that is that when you look at um, uh, the last years, okay, even that continued. And as the most interesting part was that I was supposed to give the degree to my son, okay. And we cannot meet because I cannot meet others. So naturally I cannot meet my own son also convocation. So my son's avatar took 
uh, the thing from my avatar even though at home we are meeting, okay? <laughs> so, that is number one. And secondly, when we had this, uh, our chief guest for that, so I said if you are not doing any physical thing, right? So let me go to the furthest possible point to get the cheap guest. So last year it was, uh, you know, Jeff Hinton, okay, who is like, you know, the most well-known in the machine learning person. So we said that we are going to create an avatar for you, okay. And after that, so he was very happy and he you know, said, okay, let me give you my pictures and all, all he gave. And we gave the thing back to him. Oh, he says, I am delighted that now I have an avatar and I can show that. So he himself was very, you know, nice and he gave a nice comment. So the thing is that we have already done that. But the question I tell you, even though people talk about that, it's not so going to be so easy, okay? The reason is that it will be extremely painful, okay? Because when you, you know, if you wear this uh, AR, VR, you know, those, those kind of uh, assets, actually things, there is a jitter. And your movement, you know, eye compenses. You have uh, what you call the uh, your uh, saccades and all this thing. It doesn't have it, so it's like a things moving fast and very. You get very tired, so you cannot live in metaverse more than five minutes or so. If you are really young, maybe a little longer. But if you are, if you grow old, I don't think few minutes. Uh, it's just not possible. Okay, unless they have to drastically improve the technology. As of now, currently the technology, you know would not let you go beyond that. Yeah, that's, that's, I think, uh, a, you know, a challenge, a research challenge, and also Absolutely. a cautionary tale for all the hypes that, that are going around. So since you talked about the COVID times, I have one more question related to that. Uh, you also worked on an area which perhaps is the biggest application, you know, has seen the biggest application uh, post-COVID, or we'll see. You, know, so. you hold patents. Uh, you know, for among several others, device and method for automatically recreating a content preserving and compression efficient lecture video, and system for creating a capsule representation of an instructional video. Both of these help in automating the cumbersome process of creating lecture videos. You know, I have done some. I know. I know how how tough it is. What was your motivation? I mean, this is right up there, you know, this is what probably is required. Okay. What was your motivation? See, motivation is always, a, you know, at the function of the time and space, okay? So, if you look at when it was the job was done, okay, it was a time when your display was very small, okay? And this is quite limited. So, what we wanted to, so, if you try to do it at that time, it will not, you are not doing on, you know, on your mobile, you know, supposing you do it, your display resolution was so pure, if you are doing mathematical equations and others, you know, if you are really writing it, 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 you can't read it anything. So the idea was that you do something that as you, this, it will just pick up the most, the area that you are teaching at that instant of time. Because you are, you know, like a blackboard, you should focus only on that part of it, okay? So we picked up that particular job, so automatically finds out that, so that the legibility is very important, okay? And then you create that, so, autom so that automatically you can create that and then you have basically like a cursor tracking problem and then you just do it over there. We can also super resolve and things like this so that it improves in terms of the quality and then that is what is to be fed back. Does it have a, a relevance today now? The display resolution, the bandwidth has gone up, okay. I am not sure that uh, many people would go for that as of now because, you know, simply now you get most of the thing, you get like almost, you know, uh, 4K resolution in some of these things. So maybe now it's no longer needed. But that time, yes, probably we thought that was the motivation for doing it. Okay. Um, you know, this is just about, uh, you know, uh, finding problems to solve. How do you go about finding problems? You know, because for a researcher, that's the biggest thing. You have hundreds of problems out there. Which problem do you pick up? Right? Are there any methodology to do it? You know, obviously none, perhaps. But it's. But what is your, you know, overall approach to the whole thing? So, I would say that there are two aspects. See, first thing is that if you want to be really doing research, okay, which probably where you can really contribute. You have to first do your strength and weakness analysis, okay? 
Now I don't want to pick up a problem where I'm weak. Okay. So there I'm sure there are so many weaknesses that I have. So why get into that? You should always pay, play to your strength. Okay. Now over the years you develop certain strength. Okay. And of course it's always good to see that if you have weakness try to compensate, get improved. Okay. So number one, that defines the kind of you know the domain, you know, you basically you get a subset of the entire set of problems. Okay, number one. Number two is that uh, what is the relevance of the problem? Okay. So maybe certain things may be interesting, you know, but uh, it's something to look at, okay. Uh, but may not have much other relevance in terms either a technological relevance or societal or maybe, you know, like uh, application wise. If you want to solve something for the fun of it, it's a different thing. But if you want to do it as somebody, in, you know, over a longer period, okay, if it is a, you know, quick, I think, low-hanging fruit, do it and get done, no issue. But if you want to stay longer, ideally, that's what you want to do, okay. Uh, I mean, that's why I was trying to, most cases, I wanted to go to some point, bring it to the level where I have enough material and consolidate it in the form of a monogram, okay. Then. I think then it's a com you know more or less complete analysis of no, I may not be complete I would not say but at least the size you know to good extent uh, you developed over time that doesn't happen if you are just simply you know crawling over problems and look at okay this is something because person X has done person Y has done like this so that's one second thing also uh, you know sometimes you look at the collaboration aspect. I know that there is something, this area I'm not good, but there are certain things that I see that be interesting thing happen. And that's how I picked up haptics, okay, because it was not. I visited, uh, the, you know, to Technical University of Munich uh, quite a few summers, and I find that they were doing something. And then look, I said, if you were doing it, I can actually mathematically give you certain kind of uh, bounds, okay. Would you like that? Then they said, okay, fine. Then I said, okay, what about the corresponding learning on that. So we s gradually, you know, uh, you picked up. And then we set up part of the lab. It's like this. So it, uh, then what happens, you don't come out of the haptics immediately, immediately because then you stay there and continue. And then I think we have, I have at least graduated, I think, what, uh, four or five uh, PhD in uh, haptics area. Okay. <laughs> so uh, the problem, of course, in uh, haptics in India is I understand that it's still not there. I actually, I was, I volunteered because there is a national project on digital heritage, okay, preserving the digital heritage, where you want to do things like, you know, let's say Hampi and others, you know, we have, I think it is under Shantanu Chaudhuri, another IIT Kharagpur person who is actually the national coordinator for that. And they were looking at the way of preserving this. But the question is, can you, we said, okay, can you touch that object also in some sense? I said, okay, I'll volunteer that part, okay? So we did that, that kind of thing. And then it was actually the exhibition and all. So it's an interesting thing, okay? And then you bring into the perception, then what happens? Because then actually it brings in a very interesting mathematical problem, which I don't know how to solve it. We're still struggling. Is that normally when you define a distance, okay? So you know that this is, what is the definition of distance? A is always greater than B, even if it is greater than 0 0.000 whatever something, right? But I don't want to do it. Human visual system, if 0.5 is almost same as 0.555 or something like that, right? So slack. So what is called like, you know, perception is like a just noticeable difference. Can you put it mathematically in terms of the distance function? So these are the thing it becomes, then it creates a new problem. And that, that's how you start developing, you know, I think, I mean, most people do it like that. No, you know, since you are both an administrator and a researcher, I wanted to ask you this one very important question. Um, when it comes to research, you know, you had those time of, un, you know, so-called relatively unbridled freedom, right? Relatively, right? No pressure on time and no pressure on budget. Okay. Budget? That has no. That, I don't think that's. <laughs> yeah, you know, rel relatively. Okay. Uh, you know, if you compare today, but when you, when you when today when you s look at the research field, especially with the industry academy, a kind of a Know, collaboration happening. Uh, I am asking you, is there a pressure to show results because of which the quality of research is going down? So, 
I mean, this is from the administration side, we just finished a round of promotion. Okay. So, all of them. So, this is definitely, this question is very relevant to that. Uh, this statement that is always published or perish is there definitely in the, you know, the, this particular case. See, the issue is that, you know, sometimes uh, we go into the publication mode and it is just like, you know, you take the data or some observation, do something and publish. But, and you have a large number of publications. But these are not really substantive in that sense, okay. Then I am not, I am not very keen that this is something that we should be doing, okay. See, finally, you have to look at what is the intellectual satisfaction, you know. At some point, uh, you do something and of course, you could always say in the hindsight, I could have done better, that's a different thing. But is there any learning for me, okay? And I think I'll put it very, you know, nicely. Once uh, I had a B.Tech student, in his third year, he used to come occasionally, every time he used to say, sir, tell me, you know, I, I'll do something. So once I said, like, you know, I talked about what to make. I said, I don't understand. Can you explain, you know, read and do it, okay? And uh, then he did, he did a good job. He explained to me everything and nice seminar, all those things. Then he says, okay, now tell me what, what should I do next? I said, you have studied, now let's, you know, why not do that implement and let's see what can. And you know, very interesting thing he said. He said that, look, I studied, the, you told me I studied it, okay. But what I, you know, I study because I wanted to learn, okay. But here I find the machine learns, I don't learn anything, okay. <laughs> now, if that is not what I want to do, and I said, this is the kind of, you know, the student we should be looking at. And I was so happy as a, you know, as a guide that, yes, I mean, this is nice. And as I, you know, the last part I can tell you that this person was applying somewhere, okay, as a PhD. And normally we write, uh, you know, reference later, okay. And I want everybody to get somewhere to higher study. I always write very nice things, okay. So this person, you know, the one of the um, person who wanted to take him as a student, said that is what is you have written this but do you actually mean it okay like you know so this is also i got some time then i gave this particular you know incident and he said i got my answer i, I am taking him okay so this is the kind of thing is that you know at the end of your journey you would like to know that what is my learning okay and if i am not if you know that's the only satisfaction i would say for publication and all is of course you have to show some output because society demands it, your job demands it, your students need because they are career, it has to be there. But I think at the end, that's not the right, I would say, the uh, metric. I think that's an amazing answer that I have heard because I, I just had a question on technology and courage, you know, when I was hearing uh, Professor Kincha talking about it, right? Uh, what is the, you know, what is the place of a student who likes to take a contrarian view, you know, in today's academy? You just answered it, you know. Amazingly. So, thanks for that. Now, I would like to uh, invite audience to ask any questions before I ask the last question. Look into the data and you will find the problem. You find? This I what did not say that. This was in your one of no, your no, slides. No, I, I say, I, I say that it's not, it's a slightly, okay, that I should know what to look for in the data. Like the picture that you are saying, that, that, that is the... No, I think my, what I noted on was look into the data and you will find the problem. So I would like to know the secret of yours of looking into the data. <laughs> <laughs> no, see, I have one, uh, I think, advantage, okay? The advantage is that we are working on in the picture domain, right? So when you have this, I get to see what's there, okay? I mean, at the end of it, you know, earlier days, many times it was like, what is the output you see, it, okay? So, you know, it's, it's very interesting that you, you know, the, the ask this question that, you know, uh, when you solve something, let's say whatever the pro problem that you look at it, in the visual domain, since if I'm recreating and getting something, so I have a representation and I can find out that this is where the error is, okay? And it's always, you know, with time, you get to see that, where the problem is, okay, and uh, it's always true, like for example, you have been 
let us say for example, grading students, uh, you know, the answer sheets, okay. Now, we can do a lot quicker and precisely we know the where the problem would be and we look for those rather than reading everything in uh, details because, right. So, and I can give you an example that once uh, I used to, uh, you know, to give in my exam, uh, open book, you know, ex your mid sem okay, which is like, you know, I used to give them seven days, okay, not just one day or something. And I said, it is open everything. This is, this is the set of problem. You do it, whatever. Now, when they submitted, once I wrote to one of the students' uh, answer sheet that, did you solve this in a rail station? Okay. Now, then when I give this back, okay, the student said, sir, how did you know? Okay, I solved actually in the bus station. Okay. Then, and he mailed it to one of his friend who submitted this one. Okay, he says like I was actually traveling and during that process I did it. Then I said, look, I have given you seven days, okay, and that means you need to think and do it. What I see the answer is just like, you know, quick rapid fire, you have done it somewhere very far. So, when you, when I saw that, based on that I made a comment, it's not that I knew what's going on, okay, but it turns out that he was doing in a hurry somewhere. So, same thing is true that when you actually look into the image, it prompts you that this is where actually the problem is, okay, and this is what I have to do, uh, solve this, okay. Like for example, you know, when I talked about the edge getting shifted, I can mathematically write down how much it is if I know the, you know, nature of the function, okay. But if you try to look the intermediate things, you sh I sometimes I tell my students, show that, okay, I want to see that particular thing. That gives that kind of feedback and then you can say, oh, this is now I need to correct it. I don't know whether I answered your, yeah, okay. Thank you, sir, for that question. Any more questions? Uh, before we close, I will ask the last question. Um, uh, sir, who, had, who has had the most influence in your life? Uh, you know, and what would you be, what would you like to be remembered for and as? More, you know, as a researcher, as an administrator, you know. Okay, okay so you have two questions. Two questions. Right, so not one. So the first question is that, uh, you know, the contribution that uh, who are the one who, who actually help you? There are many. I think when you are grow up, uh, definitely I would say my father played uh, a big role, okay, in terms of shaping that, you know, what should be the path, okay. Uh, that of course continued, then I was lucky to get lot of good teachers, many of them like in IIT, you know, not in, in Nordendrapur we get good students. I, the teachers were, by the way, was not so probably good in my school, okay. But uh, even in, when you knew his hand, you, we had a professor, Elias Masri. You know, he was such a good teacher. Uh, professor G.S. Sanyal, for example, in IIT uh, Kharagpur, beautiful teachers, okay. And they could actually, you know, you see a lot of value in terms of what they do. So definitely they help you. Now, so it's a collective thing. So then together, you, you know, that's, that should be remembered and that's, you know, definitely, you know, I should be thankful to all of them. Now, on the other hand, the second thing that you are saying that what you would like to be remembered for, I would completely put it in at this thing. I would not like to be remembered for at all, okay. The reason, you know, I tell you what, the, you, you know, there was a very nice, uh, I think uh, there is a person called uh, Sharvapriya Nanda, I think probably, who is the head of uh, this New York uh, Vedanta Ashram. I think he has a lot of very beautiful uh, kind of uh, YouTube videos, okay. And one of them was, you know, in some sense like this. And there was, I was listening to that, okay. That, you know, it's like, topic is Amritasya Putraha, okay that you want to be, you know, immortal, right? And if you want to be the immortal, right, then of course you realize that you can't, okay? So what does it mean, you know, in that sense? Of course for them the Vedantic philosophy would be different, but if you normally, if the misinterpretation or something would be that, since I know that finally I have to leave, okay, 
you would like to set up, and that's what the king, others, they want to say, okay, set up this, uh, you know, place like Suvasis Chaudhuri Award or some pillar or something, Ash Ashoka's pillar and others. You try to do that, okay? So that it's not me, it's my Kirti, okay? Which stands the, you know, the time, whatever. But to me, that's, I mean, not the right thing to do, okay? See the, you in time, space, everybody comes, they have a position, others, you do something. But finally, we are supposed to, you know, the Bible says, thus thou art to the vile returnest. Okay, you have to go back. Okay. And why would I leave a, want to leave a trace? I should not be. I came, at, you know, there, there, enjoyed my time, tried to do whatever I thought would be the right thing to do. And then I just leave. That's it. I think I would stop at that point. Okay. Thank you. Thank, thanks a lot for a wonderful session. You know, due to paucity of time, I had many questions. I had to skip many of them. Uh, so thanks. Thank you, sir, for thank joining you, us today. Thank you. Thank you.